So, are you a no drama person? Come on, look at me. We're turning up the heat. Super, super hot. And having a blast. There's something like sexy. Whoa. It's the hottest show on YouTube. You have excellent taste. Ladies and gentlemen. With the conversations you want to listen to. You feel like you've been deep in love before? <laughs> you won't find a lineup like this anywhere else. You're being controversial out of the gate. <laughs> I love it. You never know who you're going to see. That was like, whoa. Or what they will say. You have to roll the dice. Oh, baby. But what's it like having Elvis in your family? He was hit up in this situation that was like way bigger than him. So how did Zola come along? Why are you on my Twitter? Why are you on my Facebook? Why are you on my Tumblr? I just thought it was genius. And I thought it was really incredible how they adapted the Twitter thread, how they turned it into a script. I just became like a certified death doula. Wow. Hey family, welcome to the Carlos Watson Show. Now today we've got one of the hottest actresses on the rise in Hollywood today, Riley Keough, actress, model, granddaughter of Elvis Presley. Now she comes from a long line of actors and musicians and entertainers. And since she made her film debut in 2010, barely stopped working. You've seen her in everything from The Runaways, Magic Mike, Mad Max, Fury Road, American Honey, and of course, The Girlfriend Experience. Now her latest project is getting a ton of buzz in Hollywood, it's called Zola. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss her. Here's Riley Keough. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Hey, Riley. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? I'm great. How are you? You know, I'm good. I'm glad summertime is here. I needed summer. Are you in L.A.? I wish I was. I was in L.A. last week. I'm in the Bay Area this week. Are you born and raised? Are you one of the few, the proud? Are you an Angelino? I was born in Santa Monica and raised in between California, Florida, and Hawaii. So, so what's it like uh, uh, having Elvis in your family? Because he so penetrated global culture. Return to send up address But this is like an actual family member. It's your grandfather. You know, he passed away before you were born, I think. Is that right? I think about him, and it's definitely emotional. You know, it was my mother's father, and there was like loss and grief around that for her. And, you know, she would show me, show us music, and we'd go to Memphis and go to Graceland. And when I'd hear his music still or see him, it was this sort of, oh, my mother's heartbroken because of this. But I can't help falling in love with. He was just this like Southern boy that ended up in this situation that was like way bigger than him. And I think I really get a strong sense of like what he was really like as a as a person and the kindness. How do you feel about the spotlight? Because not only, obviously to some extent, you, you must be okay with it, otherwise you wouldn't be an actor and, and you wouldn't have been a model and you would have done all the things that you've done. But 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 do you do you enjoy it? I like performing. I like acting, but I don't I don't love attention on me. I'm, I am more of an introvert, probably. I cannot understand why you would do something so stupid. Because I like it. Everyone will find out what you really do for a living. What did you say? And what about your mom? Her relationship with it was much more, was more difficult. I think that it was also a time where tabloids were really horrible. I think she definitely would enjoy more quiet, more peace, more, that's something she, kind of wanted her, her whole life, I think. What are your main memories from uh, spending time with your dad uh, growing up? Now he was always hanging out with these sort of eccentric uh, artists. Always felt sort of like an adventure, I think. As a kid, it was so different to what I ex experienced at my mom's. That it, I kind of had both both experiences, which I think, yeah, I feel grateful for that. Hey, last month I went dancing at this cute spot in Florida where my roommate's girl made like five G's a night. You want to go somewhere with me? That's my place. Shut it so. Your brain is broke. So how did Zola come along? 
how did you come into the project? How did that happen? I was in Toronto at the film festival and I was in the lobby and my agent basically said that she was talking to somebody and there's a film called Zola based off of the Twitter thread that um, they're going to send to you to read. And I'd read the Twitter thread in 2015, like live when that viral thing happened. So they sent me the script and I read it and I just thought it was genius. And I thought it was really incredible how they adapted the Twitter thread, how they turned it into a script. It is a dark comedy. Uh, two women become fast friends and take a road trip from Detroit to Florida. This bitch with a nappy ass head was up in my face. And things fast. <laughs> fast. 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 It felt like we were reading this like modern stage play. I hadn't read writing like it. And now, when you were prepping for it, did you talk to many dancers? So I played a stripper. This would be my third time, actually. So I, I had previously spent a lot of time in strip clubs and and doing pole dancing. Now, why do you think the people keep tabbing you as a stripper? I don't know. I keep getting stripper, like I, like white trash, like all of this stuff. I, I, it's like a, it's a real thing. People think. I guess I, I guess I'm good at it. Where's that accent from? Yeah. Texas, to a Southern girl, a real American honey like me. But I have to say, we have been different variations of, you know, these things, which has been fun. Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully, dream fearlessly. All right, now if you could take on any role, what would be an example of kind of role you would love or a couple roles that would make you smile? I think I'm in the mood at the moment to do things that are like a little less serious. Like I'm, I've done, I've done a lot of very serious work and I'm, I'm as a person not like that. So I think I'm kind of in the mood to like do things that aren't as dark and serious at the moment. Now who's your favorite stand-up comedian? Who, uh, who makes you laugh? What kind of comedy do you like? I like dark comedy, probably. It's funny because Janixa's sense of humor is really similar to mine. When I saw her first film and then read the script, I was like, oh my gosh, like there's somebody that has my sense of humor. Like Janixa Bravo. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was so blessed to get to work with her. I was mugged. Yes. You saw who did it? It was a gang, a Latino gang, not a black gang. A lot of people still think black when you say gang. Is that right? Now, would you be willing to be roasted? I would love being roasted. And, I... <laughs> and who would you who would you love to have roast you? Who do you who do you want to have roast you? I would love Nicole Kidman to roast me. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> My childhood idol. That would be pretty cool. When I was twelve, I think Moulin Rouge came out. That was the first movie I saw. I can remember being like so emotionally affected by. And that was kind of the first experience I had with like tragedy and death and this crazy wild performance and this theatrical experience. I remember being like, this is what I want to do, you know? So what are your favorite songs? What songs do you sing when no one's around or maybe when everyone's around? Like I'd always sing um, songs like with people on a guitar. When the morning comes, I cry for you too. But I never had really like sang or explored my voice before until this show that I'm about to start called Daisy Jones and the Six, which was based off of this book. She's a singer. And so now I've been singing a lot. And I like singing like folk or country and like, like Towns Van Sant. Well, if I needed you, would you come to me? Would you come to me and ease my pain? That's like my husband plays guitar, and that's kind of like what we'll sing around the house. And how did you guys meet? We met on Mad Max Fury Road. We were filming, and my husband was a stunt guy. We met during the while we were shooting, but then we actually started dating a year later. We did reshoots in Australia, and we, we re-met and then fell in love. Now, did you have your eye on him originally, or did it, did it take a second take? I did not have my eye on him at all. I like, he looked really young and kind of weird. And I remember, like, I, I knew who he was, but I wasn't 
at all thinking like that. And I was dating somebody else at the time. And a year later, I remember it was like a smaller crew and he walked in and he looked so different and he looked like he'd really grown up. He just felt more mature. I was like, wow, like, I don't remember Ben being like that. And then I was kind of going, I was in Australia for the reshoots and then I was just gonna stay there for two months because I was thinking, when else am I gonna go to Australia? So this was probably like a week into us dating and we were driving up to where his family lives in Australia. And he went into a gas station to get something and I was outside having a coffee and I remember he walked out and I just had this like premonition. I was like, that's the father of my kids. Like I just knew it. All right, if the modeling acting career had not taken off, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Wow, um, I'd probably be like a monk, to be honest, I think. Or like, I just became like a certified death doula. I might do that. What is a death doula, if you don't mind me asking? What's what's a death doula? A death doula is, it's basically like this, a similar concept to like a doula, that someone's a birth doula. And it's somebody there to sort of support, uh, support somebody through the dying process. I, I'm sure people appreciate you in doing that. What, what brought you to do that work? Um, yeah, so I lost my brother in, in 2020. And I think that the lack of resources was really shocking to me, specifically kind of spiritually. I didn't like the way that Western society sort of shoves death away. You don't talk about it. I, I was upset that nobody had ever talked to me about it my whole life. So I just, I guess I just wanted to be of service in that area and I found, um, I, then I found out about being a death doula. What's the best advice you've either gotten or given about how to dream fearlessly and bring those dreams alive? Because it's funny, I've been, I've been both thinking about this myself but also having conversations with a lot of people about the last year, year and a half. When you think about growing up, is it really the last year, year and a half, or has it been even a longer window than that in which you've started to feel kind of major changes? I've always been looking to better myself and to work on myself. And during the pandemic, I had that opportunity because like so many people, we're in this like hamster wheel of just like go, go, go. And you don't have the time to really to give yourself to make these sort of profound internal changes that are necessary and really work on things and look at things and sit with yourself. And so I definitely think the last, in the last year, I've also gone through grief and really intense. I've had a wild, wildly crazy year. And I, within that though, I've had a lot of time that I didn't have to be working, that I could, you know, sit and grow or work on myself or whatever you want to call it. I think being a little childlike is really important, you know, and I think that that sort of childlike wonder and uh, uh, love is like kind of the goal. So I don't, I, so it's more like um, remembering who you are, <laughs> you know, and just being in a new state of mind, like I suppose. But yeah, I think it definitely in the last year, I've I've changed a lot. I've, I've had the opportunity to. Riley, I love to do this thing sometimes that I call rapid fire, uh, where I ask a kind of whole beautiful mishmash of questions. Do you mind if I throw a variety of things at you? Yep. Okay, your favorite movie of all time. Oh, I hate this question. I never can pick one. You can give me a couple that you've really liked. Um, the first one would be E2 Mama Tambien. That was a fire choice. That's a great choice. You came out of the gate with a good one, okay? Paris, Texas. That's another film I, I love. The Handmaiden, that Korean film. Oh, The Pan Pan's Labyrinth. I love that movie. When do you think you'll direct your first film? I have. I already directed it and it's not out yet. So prayers to me. Your favorite book? There's this book called The Master and Margarita that my dad made me read when I was a kid. And it was kind of the first like big book that I ever finished. The most excited you've ever been to meet another celebrity? So when I was a teenager, I met Cole Kidman and Mick Jagger at the same party. And it was kind of like at the height of my Nicole Kidman thing. And also at the time I was going through this like 60s, 70s rock and roll phase. So I was like very overwhelmed by both of them. All right, your most unexpected celebrity friendship. Unexpected celebrity friendship. I'll tell you, it's Dakota Johnston and it's unexpected because I didn't expect 
it to be a celebrity friendship because it was just my childhood friend. My best friend is my best friend. You mess with me, you mess with her. You mess with her, you mess with me. You mess with us. Girl, you better pray. Riley, what's the most beautiful place you've ever been to in this world? Japan. I love Japan. Hawaii has a very special place in my heart. I love so many places. I think yeah. that it's so hard. We live in a very beautiful world. And honestly, the California coast is pretty it is. It is. Riley, I can't wait to see the set of films that you are going to make. Um, and I know you said you made the first one and uh, and we're going to wait to see it. But something tells me this is going to be a fun decade and we're going to we're going to see a lot of good work from you. I'm, I'm kind of excited. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to be here. Riley, Kyo, crew talk, pick one. She kind of remind me of Danica Patrick in a sense, like, you know, well, I, I didn't know who she was, so it was really unexpected, the conversation. Um, and then she started talking about, like, you know, she wanted to be a monk, if you know. So it's like, really caught me off guard. Nobody really says that a lot. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good conversation. The death doula thing, I, I told you that's, that's going to be my career after I retire as a makeup artist. Um, I've been looking into it for a long time. There's, it's, it's such a fascinating thing. She's had a lot of tragedy in her life and a lot of loss. I appreciate that she is so in this beautiful search and, and, seeing de and trying to normalize death, which I think is a beautiful thing and something I really believe in too. Hey, it was Riley Keough. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation with her. Uh, what a bright, thoughtful, interesting up and coming, not just actor, but filmmaker. I think she's gonna be a terrific director. She clearly has big stories to tell. Hadn't heard someone talk about being a death doula. I think that's gonna be a special opportunity, not only for the people she helps, but maybe even for herself as well. I think there's a lot of learning there. All right, listen, you know the drill. As things go, please be sure to like, comment, and let people know that you love this show. Jump into it. But guess what? Before you leave, I got a little treat for you. Now, you know I love these sneakers called Carriuma. They're these brilliant Brazilian sneakers, sustainably made, all kinds of good stuff here. And guess what? I'm not the only one who gets to try them. You get a shot too. Go to carriuma.com slash Carlos. Treat yourself. Be nice to yourself. It's summertime, people. Come get some of the good stuff. I'll see you soon.